Hi, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to give you an update on what's going on with uh, nucleic acid polymers. Uh, just uh, some quick review slides here. The mechanisms of action of 2139. The primary mechanism is inhibiting the assembly of subvar particles and also uh, which has downstream effects on their secretion and uh, delta envelopment. And we've demonstrated uh, interactions with the small and the large forms of delta antigen, which likely have upstream effects on the replication of uh, delta virus as well. Uh, the latest data that we published really tells us now where these compounds are acting. This is the secretory pathway and assembly pathway for subvar particles. We know that NAPs enter the ergic and they actually interfere with the morphogenesis of subvar particles. This has two very important effects. First, uh, intracellular degradation of surface antigen is enhanced. We actually see very rapid declines of surface antigen inside the cell. And of course, the more, the, also the important one, which is inhibition of the secretion of surface antigen here, uh, really is restricted to subvar particles. As we know that these, these uh, compounds do not affect the secretion of V antigen or Dane particles. So all of the clinical effects that we see are really related to stopping the replenishment of subvar particles and allowing the host-mediated immune response to clear these particles. So the 401 study is our latest study. Uh, this is basically a study where uh, we take a lead-in of tenofovir followed by either transition to PEG tenofovir or triple combination with PEG tenofovir and NAPS. And then uh, for futility, these patients all got crossed over to the same triple combination therapy. This is what the control group looks like, the surface response and the seroconversion response. This is, of course, is what you expect to see uh, with tenofovir and interferon, and this is what happens when you add NAPs. Uh, so very, very rapid declines in surface ant, oops, let's go back. Let's try that one. Very, very rapid declines in surface antigen and corresponding increases in anti-HBS, breaking the seroconversion limit. These are all those patients grouped together after crossover. So just to show you, whenever we add NAPs, we see these nice declines of surface antigen and the seroconversion of core, uh, sorry, the important thing to note here is that most of these patients are genotype D and in the latest re large trial with tenofovir and interferon, actually no surface antigen loss was observed in genotype T patients. This is actually a bigger step forward than is obviously apparent because genotype T is the hardest patient to achieve S loss in, at least in the prior studies. There is the seroconversion, again, restricted to those patients that get very efficient clearance of surface antigen. The other remarkable feature of this technology, which we've observed in all of our trials, the antigen negative, re antigen positive, or co-infected, is the appearance of flares. So these are the flares in those patients. Again, we most intense when the surface antigen is the lowest. 95% of participants in this trial experienced flares. They were all of them otherwise asymptomatic without any impact on liver function throughout all these flares. We measured bilirubinabine and INR on a weekly basis. So now we've reached the end of the follow-up in this uh, trial. So we have 36 patients that have completed, 32 patients that went all the way to 48 weeks, and 36 have at least had 24 weeks of follow-up and completed therapy. Most of these patients have normalized uh, ALT, reversal of median hepatic stiffness, and many of them are normal. Uh, the surface antigen response that we observed on treatment is largely conserved. Again, here less than the LLOQ, 42%. Also, the DNA response in the absence of nukes is largely conserved. Here again, almost 50% remain target not detected. And clinical benefit, whether virologic control or functional cure, is achieved in a very high proportion of patients. So currently, right now, 78% of those patients do not meet the criteria for treatment under current guidelines. Uh, so just as a re uh, another uh, update on the other trial that's been ongoing was the efficacy of these compounds and co-infections. So uh, this is a very suboptimal regimen here where we just did a short burst of combination treatment with NAPs and interferon. We were just testing tolerability at this time. Nevertheless, you see the same rapid declines in surface antigen. There's a synergy here when you combine them together. You see the same seroconversions. This only happens when the surface antigen is less than one IU before we add interferon on. Uh, there's the delta response, which happens in every patient. Everybody goes down to target not detected. The only rebounds that happen are in the absence of NAPs. And there's the DNA response, which remained well controlled in the absence of nukes. We also see flares in these patients. And again, here, they're really restricted to the introduction of interferon, but only in those patients that had surface antigen less than one IAU per ml prior to treatment. These are the patients that got interferon and uh, had surface antigen greater than one IU per ml. And this is the single DILI patient we've observed in our 77 experiences with treatments of NAPS to date. 
All the other patients' liver function is unaltered. This is just to give you an example here. Al Billy Rubin, albumin, and INR, uh, routinely normal all the way throughout. So we've completed now three to three and a half years of follow-up, and you can we'll be presenting the detailed patient data at, the, at our poster at ASLD. So currently we have very high rates of normalization of ALT, reversal of median hepatic stiffness. Uh, the surface antigen response uh, is good, but not as good as we expect with mature triple combination therapy. And more importantly, the delta RNA being target not detected has been preserved so far throughout this follow-up. There are two other patients that had a tumor log reduction from baseline preserved, but those patients do not have normal liver function. They've elevated ALT. In the patients that have delta RNA target not detected, the HBV outcomes are interesting here. So uh, the DNA response is below 2,000 in all of those patients. Five of them have target not detected, and, and all of those patients either have virologic control or functional cure of HBV. So combining the 52 patients together from both studies, we're starting to take a look at how we can predict who is going to have a th positive therapeutic outcome. So we, positive therapeutic outcome means virologic control or functional cure. But we note here that exclusively functional cure patients, all of them got down to uh, what we call target not detected, but certainly less than the LLOQ. This was not universal for virologic control. And these four patients were patients that left the treatment very early for a variety of reasons. So surface antigen getting very low during therapy is an important part, I, we believe, of functional cure. Necessary, but not sufficient. When we look at the flare activity, this is just ALT. We either look at maximum on treatment or area under the curve throughout treatment. And we notice two different kinds of flares. So these are both not bad flares. And we call the first set of flares non-productive, which means we don't see any correlation between, oops, between S decline and the, uh, either the ALT max or the ALT area you see. And these flares result in a high proportion of rebound patients. And the other flares, we call them production, productive flares. They're mostly associated with functional cure. And these are all the patients that left treatment early, these rebound patients. So just to summarize, just to remind people that circulating surface antigen really is derived 99.99% from some of our particles. And we believe, again, these play an important role in blocking host immune function. 21 39 selectively targets some of our particles uh, without affecting the release of E antigen or Dane particles. And these effects of simultaneously lowering intracellular surface and blocking its replenishment, we believe, are driving these important uh, flares and seroconversion events that we're observing during therapy. And probably also indirect activity against delta is important in this scenario. More importantly, when we add this NAP-based surface antigen clearance to an existing backbone of tenofovir and Pegasus, we dramatically improve uh, the outcomes. So virologic control or functional cure in 78% of patients normalization of liver function, and we believe that this triple combination will work much better uh, when it's applied to co-infected patients, predicting positive therapeutic outcomes. Seems like getting surface antigen to very, very low levels seems to be necessary but not sufficient, and we notice here that in all of our studies, transaminase elevations appear to be correlated with surface antigen reduction. And although I can't present you the detailed analysis, we'll be presenting this at the HEPDART meeting, we know now that transaminase elevations, while surface antigens less than 1 IU per ml during therapy, are, occur in all patients with functional cure and have a very good positive predictive value and negative predictive value for, negative bene for uh, clinical benefit. This disappears at the 10 IU and the 100 IU and 1,000 IU per ml threshold. So we believe that these on-therapy flares, especially in the absence of surface antigen, uh, will uh, facilitate the establishment either of virologic control or functional cure. Thank you for your time.